participatory approach in social research. So social research is generally that what we can try to say about social research. It's an empirical method. It's an empirical. So we're saying about it's an empiricism, something that is we any any processor or any step that you follow with an empirical method that is we can call it as an alternative to the word scientific. So empirical processes incur, include so focus on observable phenomena. Whether can you observe it? Like even how all the sociologists telling about whether how you observe it, whether you can can you take a real meaning out of the phenomena that happens in the society. So what is the meaning out of phenomena? So it will be the phenomena. The real meaning is in away from the subjective idea of an individual. What do we think that the real meaning it is being away from? It is the real subjective meaning or a preconception. Like what Emil Durkheim is telling about it. Emil Durkheim has given a clear points for a researcher. How a researcher wants to be a researcher to be free from preconception bias while he's approaching and while he tries to understand the social fact so from the darkim point of view how your researcher wants to be understand the social fact he wants to be free from the bias and the fact that is what we're saying about it others should be able to observe the same phenomena and sex and the check the observations for the accuracy so accuracy is more important why we call that in the sciences what we call how we divided this discipline to the sciences and social sciences while we base me which we based on that accuracy so while we're seeing about an accuracy in a way uh, that we can look at that how an accuracy is become more meaningful so accuracy so methodology so in the methodological part that is what we can saying about it the rules and guidelines followed in the research that is me more important any research if you call that characteristics of social research before we are going to the actual uh, title of the uh, study just i wanted to have some basic ideas on this part then we can proceed to the participatory approach so any uh, research any social research it has its own characteristics why do we want to do the social research it is statistical calculations and, cor and correlations needed we do social research we collect data and we do a uh, statistical calculations and correlations and the, our interest and the nature of social research try to understand and understand the phenomena with an objectivity is saying about objectivity is more important that is what we call as scientific that is what we wanted to call that is what we wanted to call as a empiricism and impartiality whether the researcher put his views on the partial one or impartial way so impartiality is it's another word we can call as a bias free and with the scientific temper so scientific processes that body follow that research is a step by step process that we follow a step by step process but the research is logical which has the logical connectivity like how we frame a hypothesis and how we frame a variable how we determine the variable setting about it independent variable and dependent variable and research is experimental how we we'll experiment so there are different methods that in which that we make a research as a process so what is the scope when we are saying about the scope for the research social research also we telling about it so the fields are unlimited why the research the field is unlimited for the social research the entire society is our laboratory so the laboratory for the social research is the entire globe so wherever there is a human society wherever there is society wherever there is a human habitations is there human beings are there which makes human society so that is saying about the society is for our subject matter for a study that is our laboratory so since our laboratory is not limited is not within our four walls so the fields are unlimited and every phase of social phenomena so what to be study there is no rules in sociology there is no rules in social sciences what to be studied and how to be studied we're saying about it exactly the phenomena the pace that we wanted to be studied like that any phenomena any pace and any dimension that uh, any dimension of the social happening or social phenomena is a subject matter for the study of sociologists or other social scientists too and every phase of human life whether we uh, whether shall we study about the only a particular social systems are the happenings in the social system are happenings in the part of the particular part of the human life no is the every phase of the human life to be studied can be studied to be understood so it will bring out with the social fact for the sociology so every stage of the past and present to the development or the materials for the social scientists take an example of uh, karl marx while he is talking about the historical materialism he talking about the history of hitherto existing societies like history of class struggle the very frame of the sentence itself which came to came to understand that is make us to understand karl marx is followed is a historical method so that is what we are saying about that every stage every stage of the past and present development 
what is happening in the society. That's why that is what Karl Marx is telling about it is every stage there is a class struggle. So the method is followed by the past and present in the futuristic point of view. And interdisciplinary in approach. Actually, we know that sociology is interdisciplinary in nature. It will be connected with all other disciplines. For example, sociology will be widely connected with an economics and anthropology, political science. See, we think about it, history, so psychology. So it will have its own connectivity. That's what we discuss even in our students. Our master students or our undergraduate students, they will study sociology. They're studying about the relationship with the sociology. Sociology and its relation with the other social sciences. So the very basic nature of the studies, they have it in undergraduation saying about it. It's interdisciplinary research. Its interdisciplinary approach is widely used in sociology. It's uh, identify areas. It's interdisciplinary in nature that we can understand. While we see um, in sociology, social research, that we, we used to call it approaches. How we approach? What do you mean by an approaches in social research? While we say the approaches in social research, that we can think about that is a positivism. So very basic approach is given by the founding father of sociology, August Comte. He's telling about positivism positivist philosophy see we think about positive what do you mean positive simply we're saying about it is the established the scientific law we see that positivism is a synonym to the word scientific or empiricism or objectivity so that is what come to saying about positivism is nothing but it's an expression of scientific it's an expression of empiricism it's the empiric ideas and ideological transmission of the human being as far as the religion is concerned that is what he's talking about it how the law of three stages be related with the positivistic philosophy and approach that's come and try to be looking in and compare the human progress in this view as far as his analysis is concerned so they establish the law, scientific laws of the society so what he's saying about positivist orientation is more important the casual so the causal relationship so the causal relationship is more important try to relating about it how the human being the human progress with related to the happenings with related to the last established laws in the societies how the process are there which are arrived by the testing hypothesis and assess its science. So when we are science which telling about it, any research, the research which makes that hypothesis is a mandatory. That, we do, that too, we will try to think about a tentative statement. Hypothesis which being as, as try to be help the researcher as a measuring rod and which help the researcher to be bring and build the research to the further level and further extent by having a tentative statement and try to go have, like, collect the data, then finally to analyze the data and try to analyze the data and try to understand the relativity, relationship between the data which being collected, relationship between the variables and out of this data he has been collected. We use the chi-square test, correlation, regressions, mini tests to know that whether the scientific relativities are there which will produce the positivism or not. Then other way, we used to call that interpretivism, interpreting, like even the Max Weber, he's finally studying about it, so research is nothing but the Weberian idea is saying about it. Research is nothing but what we interpret. How we are, how your person, how your sociologist, how your social scientist that tries to understand the happenings in the society. He used to call the social action. Understanding the social action and interpreting the social action, interpreting the meaning for the social action. It's like interpreting the meaning for the human behavior. He used the word action instead of the human behavior. He says that interpretative. That is what Max Weberian sociology to be called as an interpretative sociology. So he says he is saying about a person, scientist has to use Western method to understand interpretative understanding of the social happening. He says that it's an interpretative sum. <coughs> the next the third part that is we saying about is a critical social research. Even critical social research also is very familiar in sociology that we call with an approach of Habermas. Habermas used to say about the critical theory, critical approach. And we are seeing about that how the critical theory, critical approach, critical theory perspective of the Habermas. And even again, we are saying about how its interpretive understanding is applied at the level of human opinion, consciousness, decision making, the democratic process as for the in the sphere, the social sphere, and the, the Habermas, which talked to public sphere, is talking about it. So here to ask the critical questions with a view to changing society or the transform the unequal power relationships. So that were critically put our questions to ask to know the facts so every stages your sociologist or the social scientists they will try to ask question analyze why what how so without asking the basic questions why how what so there is the research will not be fulfilled without getting an answer for the questions research will not be completed 
so we call that social research in the scientific process so any social research why is social research why we call that sociology even a scientific sociology as a science the very basic and the very basic the ideas given by the founding father of a sociologist august Kamp, as stating that sociology is a science not only august Kamp. Just you can see that all other uh, sociologists they are justifying that sociology as a science. Why they are justifying sociology as a science? Because sociology which follows scientific processes, sociology which follows scientific processes in its research, in its study. So that is why we call that sociology as a science. It has scientific process. It involves a systematic collection of the methods to uh, and produce knowledge. It's an objective. So we're saying about some objectivity, objective in nature. It can tell you things and you do not expect because what we expect we become a bias it's a subjectivity and it will tell you things which we do not expect but that is what the fact social fact that is what we see that it consists of theory and observations and sometimes calls the soft sciences so because the subject matter studies of the human being so we study about the human being uh, fluid and hard to measure precisely that is what we can see in the uh, august Comte and hierarchy of science is very clearly telling about it, which is a tougher subject. He, he put that sociology as the topmost hierarchy, stating about it. It's a high complexity, increasing complexity and the increasing dependency. So when your subject, which when your subject matter of sociology, which increase having increasing complexity and high dependency, it he called that it's very okay, complex science because it's play with the human behavior, studying your human behavior, it's difficult then understanding, getting a calculation, precise answer from the number, like in mathematics. So here we saw that it is an empirical research. X facts are assumed to exist, exit clear to the theories that explain them. So there are facts. So there is a which to be explained by the sociology research that they call that. Then the sociology research, which has its own methods and ethics. In a sociology research, we have methods and ethics. The scientific method includes the selecting and researchable problems, reviewing the literatures, formulating a hypothesis, creating an operational definition, choosing okay, choosing your research design, collecting the data, analyzing the data, and stating conclusions. All these things, the entire process will be having in the sociology research. It's an important that sociologists observe the ethics of their discipline in carrying out the research. They have an obligation to protect their research subject from the risk and harm and to protect this subject rights and dignity that is more important because in a way that we use our social media tools in a way that you use our social media techniques in the research so when we come into the qualitative because when you're seeing about social research social research it has uh, two main stream main divisions that we call that qualitative research and quantitative research methods the discipline is concerned there are processes there are methods we have widely two divided methods that we call that it's so one is a qualitative research. So actually, the entire national seminar that I have seen that uh, it has seen with the well, yeah, qualitative research. There's a quantitative research is an another macro one. There's an another big domain to be deal with that. Because why it is important to understand the qualitative research? Because subject matter like a sociology, we deal with the human being. We can't always calculate. We can't always calculate the human relations in terms of number. We can't always calculate the human relations our expression human action in terms of number for example so his expression is based on his expression reciprocal expression of a particular human being is based on the number we can't determine 0.5 percent 0.505 percent we can't determine we can't conclude so we can only we can theorize only we can describe that is why it's become more qualitative in nature because we are not always fond of uh, number because we study the human behavior we study the human interactions so human so this has become a um, okay fact for the social is concerned so qualitative research designs aims at an in-depth understanding of the human behavior the reasons that so the reasons that govern human behavior so human behavior is not only a, a complete exit action okay a domain that is what we can say about it human behavior it's uh okay it's uh, what we are telling about there it's combined with the social ground so it's an outcome. So it's a, we're coming out from the social barrier, coming out from the society. It's a social product. We call it in other words as a socialization process. We call it so we call that how human behavior is emerged, how human socialization process started. 
So it's a part and parcel of your overall society. It's based on human being, his culture, value system, norms, the social control, rules and regulation of the society, where the individual is there. So all these things are all the, the variable which determines the governing laws of the human behavior. Studying that, so well, certainly a social scientist, we need only a qualitative research to understand deeply. So we can't say expect the quantitative research will help us that much to understand this type of human behavior. So qualitative research is a field of inquiry. So that cross cuts a discipline and subject matter. For example, as we're sitting about it, so it will be it will be cross cut the discipline and subject matter. When you are telling about it, as we see that how sociology is being related with the other social sciences. So the same that we can try to look at based on these dimensions too. So with this, then we can think about the qualitative research, the qualitative research methods. So we see about there are many processes, the process of observations needed, qualitative research, record keeping, a person, qualitative research. There is the observation is an important part in qualitative research because person observe, observe the human behavior, observe human action, observe the social happenings in front of him. So where he has to observe. So observation is an important method. So whether a researcher will make an observations, the participant observation, non-participant observations, and how. So observation is a basic one of the method in collection of information as far as the quality of research is concerned. The record keeping, there's another one. How do we make a record keeping? How do we take out the records from the observed, observed phenomena? From the observations, what do you have? How do you maintain the record? The collecting of information that has become mandatory on this part, the case study research. So study of the case, whether you will you collecting information from the for the entire group of people, those who are there, or will you try to go for a study of case as an example? When you find when your sociologists or your social scientists find it that a case is a peculiar one among all other. Maybe if you study a many groups, you may study a one group, you may find that the one group was a peculiar when compared to the other groups. Or when you study a group of people and where you study a one individual as a case or a few individual as a cases and you, feel, you may feel that they are, have some peculiar nature they have some peculiar information which is highly relevant for your research so such a way so on one-on-one -on -one interview that is more so qualitative research which will be make you to be have a very close attachment with the subject we call our respondent our respondents are all our subject so the researcher will have a very close interaction with the subject the respondent so which will be make a one-on-one -on -one interview that has become very mandatory it's being important as far as quality research is concerned and focus group discussion so focusing on a group and making your one one group and subject matter for a study exploring in-depth information about the group the focus group there may be many group that may, you may be study that so how among the group that you can be select your group and you deem that so the group which has a sufficient information for your research that your researcher can bring out with. So that we call it as a focus group discussions. Our ethnography research. We know that ethnographic research, even we can study about that as far uh, in our sociological, one of the important perspectives also is there, uh, ethnometrology. Ethnography research studies about a common man method. How will you understand the people from their perspectives? Actually, ethnographic method is which is widely used both in anthropology as well as in sociology and even in other states also in nowadays there is another uh, okay field also they are using ethnographic method and to explore the realistic information from the field realistic information from the field from the context of the ethno the people so it's a ethno people graphics metrology study so we're saying about it so people method the study of people method the study of people percep okay perception people method that we call it as an ethnographic research or ethnographic method so that will be widely used because when you're social when the subject matter of the sociology is a study of people is a common man so the ethno we are saying about it so where without this method it will not be fulfilled so the further ideas related with the qualitative research what we can say that it focuses on understanding from the perspective of who and what is being studied that is more important whom you are going to study what you are going to study rather than try to establish objective description and relationship as quantitative research does so the quantitative research will do that it used to go hard with the description and relationship with the variable relationship with the variable like we are saying about that so h1 the hypothesis we make a independent variable dependent variable 
so how correlations so it all is a statistical part when the quantitative research with the data it will be used to play with that but the qualitative research in more perspective and studying of that who and what is being studied so subject matter is more on the people so qualitative studies are based on the assumption that reality is subjective dependent on the context i think we have studied in a sociology there is a one established perspective that we know that very well and we used to call that phenomenological perspective in a phenomenological perspective we have studied about that uh, okay the founder and there is a thinkers that is studied in phenomenological perspective edmund husserl or alfred schulz you see that both that we have studied about edmund husserl the founder of the phenomenology school and he used to saying about reality is an external he used to call that reality is an external what is the reality in external he said that reality is an external to the individual okay generally all other all other discipline which used to saying all other perspectives saying about it, reality is an external but phenomenological school edmund husserl he used to saying about it reality is not external reality is internal to the human being so why edmund husserl is telling about reality is internal because when the internal idea the cognitive knowledge of an individual which gives meaning for the external reality there is nothing but his mind understanding of an individual if individual is not understanding about the meaning individual don't have the ideas about the meaning what is an external reality external reality is nothing there is no reality externally so the external reality become true when there is an internal realization that is what we call about the knowledge understanding in other word what we say we can use to saying about the, from the words of randall collin cultural capital the cultural capital of individual our individual knowledge ability which determine what is the reality is external when there is no individual knowledge ability then there is no individual cultural capital so nothing external capital is nothing <coughs> the external reality is nothing so external reality will not be measured so the qualitative studies are based on the assumptions that reality is subjective depends on the context so it's a contextual meaning for example even in india take an example of we have it in india we have a idol worship pattern we have a totemism even a small pole or a brick or a tree everything being worshiped in india if any foreign man come to see about this worship pattern for them the, the worship is nothing for us it has a meaning the, to, the for us the idol has a meaning for another man the idol doesn't have any meaning so there is what contextual it's a contextual even the same concept we have studied in indian society also we have we studied about the indigenization contextualization so contextually giving meaning for your subject so social research qualitative research in a such a way it gives a meaning based on the context where the subjects are all living where the respondents are all there where the people are all there so that is become more important so there are multiple realities there is an another fact there are multiple realities so that need to be described in detail to result in a complete and deep understanding of the phenomena being investigated so what is a multiple reality is a one reality for example we see is we see something as a true we see that now we think about we, we are people are a different religious group we are ready to agree that there is a reality what is that one who is saying about it god okay god is the different form everybody ready to accept it yes there are multiple reality whether true or not that is different we saying about it there are multiple reality we ready to accept it we ready to accept different idol pattern we ready to accept the different past so in the happenings what is happening in the society the meaning what we are having in the society we ready to accept so reality which has in multiple nature because perspective will give a different meaning for the reality that we call as a multiple realities in another further we can say there is a characteristics of a quality to research there are characteristics he is saying about search for the meaning constructor reality so reality is constructor so the quality to research also we search for the meaning we have a reality is constructor even the same that is being used by even we are saying about that uh from the okay ideas of we are saying in sociology research in sociologists they are really saying about it reality is constructor so why we are saying about reality is constructed so reality is constructed by the human ideas so what human construct the social reality that is why we use we use popularly use the same terminology in the several concept 
for example reality is constructed whatever the ideas that we have it in opinion that we are constructed so can socially constructed reality right so even uh, we can think about that uh, jacques derrida when jacques derrida that is what we try he tries to talk about that deconstruction the modern or we are saying about that the modern philosophy or modernist we try to think about that modern so okay sociologists and the postmodern sociologists postmodern theorists jacques derrida he used to think about that the already constructed reality to be deconstructed because we construct the reality in every context so natural settings a rich narrative descriptions and direct data collections concerned with the process inductive data analysis participant perspective that is more important participant perspective and emerging and the research design so also being there and even further the nature of qualitative research useful for describing and answering questions about the participant and context and uh, three general pur purposes that we used to have for the qualitative research examines participant perspective towards the even beliefs and practices that is more important examining their perspectives events their beliefs and their practices so with no way a researcher being a researcher a sociologist or social scientist they will put their ideas if they put their ideas become a subjective nature here they has to only ex examine the perspective of the participant pers perspective of the subject the people to be part of the study explore complex research ideas and understand the groups and phenomena and viable alternative approach to the questions that are not in the quantitative in nature so what is the qualitative research what is saying about it the way i feel is hard to quantify then how hard on the scale on the one to 10 so it's very difficult so what is the human thinking human perception and it's very difficult for a quantification we can't quantify the human thinking we can't can quantify the human behavior right so that we saying about that there are many theories is saying about it will be very difficult so that is a way that we can understand how uh, the human qualitative research become part for example we differentiate a common distinctions between the qualitative research and quantitative descriptions and interpretations in okay inductions in qualitative research there are parameters to come across that inductions meaning in depth and uniqueness multiple realities holistic then develop theory and process oriented rich descriptions if you take a quantitative research is an explanations deductions numbers generality and single reality deductionist test theory so testing of theories what from the data that what we collected outcome oriented precise measurement that is what we call as a science when there is a precise is there precision we call that scientific parameter when you saying about precision is one of the parameter for a science when something research gives a precise when the science and which is not giving a precise research we consider as a non science subject to in nature right that's we become a philosophy right that's the difference between the subjectivity and objectivity that what we call that other main differences that we try to uh, see for the qualitative research and quantitative research is based on quantitative research based on the observations that are converted into the discrete units and that okay that can be compared to the other units by using the statistical analysis based on the positivist opinion but the qualitative one examines people words actions in narrative or descriptive ways closely representing the situations as experienced by the participants based on the phenomenological position so that we think about understanding them understanding their life world so that is what even hustle say edmund hustle saying about life world understanding the life world of the people it's more important right so that which we seeing about in another way qualitative research we see that generate theory using an inductive approach emphasizes the way in which individual interpret their social world emphasizes the participant descriptions and understanding of human behavior strives for careful and detailed descriptions or interpretations of the social practices to understand how participants experience and explain their own world so with this that is we saying about it just is the basic ideas that is what i had a general view that just we have been completed just we saying go for the, the relative ideas and the participatory approach that is what we look into what is a participatory approach actually just uh, just we have come across just recollected the ideas of what is a social research what is the types of social research we said qualitative research and quantitative research then we come to an idea of that what is a participatory research that is an uh, one of the uh, specialized areas which 
that is what we try to see with participatory research a participatory research investigates scientific investigations with educational and political actions which is being there in the society the researchers work with the members of your community to understand resolve community problems and to empower community members and to democratize the research the research become a democratized process participate approach we, we are saying about it why we the sociologists still we are talking about it there are many plannings happening in india so we have a planning commission we, we have many social planning but it's not reaching the people why we saying about it still we are demanding still we are dem demanding uh, the, our governments still we are demanding the planners to have an inclusion of the ideas of sociologists why we say that because the social planning is being planned and and majority is based on that often is by the economist well the economist they plan and they allocate the money and they process go hard with that where the inclusion of the knowledge of the sociologist also being important for the part then where you proceeded with the ideas in a way that we can say that is what we can say about to making the planning is democratic democratize the research so when you are democratize the research making the people to participate in the research process and research processes and how that we can have so that we can say about how the democratic research process it is being there on this part so the methods of participatory research includes a group discussion of the personal experiences interviews surveys participatory planning and analysis of the public document so the participatory planning also is a part of your research that is what we can say right so it's, it's, it's that will make an understanding how it is to be go hard with the process that is what we can say as a participatory research so this and in the process that we used to look at that further participatory research can be identified by the five characteristic what is the five characteristic characteristic that we identify the participatory research participation by the people being studied who the people that you are being studied they will participate that where the researcher a researcher will participate with the subject that is a respondent in the study content the context of the research in the study where they used to study and inclusion of the popular knowledge where the participatory research will make the inclusion of the popular knowledge both the popular knowledge to be included and understood how the, the research process is being there right so your focus on power and empowerment your focus on power and empowerment and also being used to go hard with that the process that is what we can say how this process leads to go hard with that then the consciousness rising and grow and the consciousness rising and the education of the participant so it makes a participatory research and the consciousness a participatory research which makes an education of the participants and consciousness right so in the political actions where we seeing about it the political actions should be placed in a role where it makes how the research process leads to go hard within on this part uh, the support respiratory so the participatory approach in the social research it's actually is very wide because the people participates in mandatory that we have seen in many several discipline even the sociology we have a rural sociology in a rural sociology as a specialization where we can saying about it participatory rural appraisal participatory planning which makes that participatory rural appraisal participatory planning participatory decision making right so people participation democratic planning all these things we will discuss in the okay when our planning participatory so we call pra technique participatory rural appraisal right so like our participatory decision making so so all this planning will be discussed in our participatory research and that is very wide by how participatory research being any any developmental activities in the state for example people they need any sort of facility whether your people do who need a, a school building or a dam or a water okay a facility for drinking water or a medical facility what any facility your people who need it in the place or a society it has been discussed with the people and how they need where they need how they been planned so people participation is needed so that is what we call as a part of participatory planning so where the researcher where the researcher will mingle with the people to understand the demand understand the need understand their okay mind wise by the way making the plan so such a planning will be a democratic planning 
such a planning will have such a planning to be called as a people participatory research actually that such planning is an outcome of people participatory research first year researcher will do a participatory research based on the participatory research they will do a planning participatory planning then they used to make a the planning project to be successful then they will go for an evaluation how the process will take in place so on this process the we have the next point we view participant observation is another model participant observation actually participatory planning is a macro in orientation so we, we call the participatory approach participatory approach in social research is very wide is macro and within that there is a participant observation is in another area we call participant observation like we, we used to say that participant observation is a one tool for a data collect data collections a one method being used by the researcher for a data collection even we know that how the william whitey who has studied about the street common society in the boston region of usa so his study was a classical example for participant observation how william whitey he observed actually we know we know very well about it uh, the boston region of us 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 in boston region there were many immigrant uh, italian immigrants were there in the boston region we call there is a biggest slum region in us in boston but there are actually it has been notified that there are people who have uh, indulged with the anti social activities so where the william whitey which you tried to go for his study why it is there how it is there the william whitey he stayed with the people in the closest in your region he has been called as a participant observation here yeah. he called the participant observations one type of data collection method typically done in the qualitative research widely used methodology in many disciplines particularly anthropology sociology and communication studies and human geography and social psychology so aim is to gain a close and intimate familiarity with a given group of individuals such as a religious occupational and subcultural group or a particular community or their practices through an intensive involvement with the people in their cultural environment usually over the extended period of time so there are methods so we saying about participant observation how to do that how they used to go with that so the participant observation we call that is a participant observation is a sociological role certain topics cannot be studied by the other means only some certain topic certain area of the research only can be studied by by the participant observation only you can't disclose your researcher can't disclose their identity if they disclose their identity they, the group they will not agree for their study a group they revile they will not revile their originality revile, revile, revile their real social happenings social practices in front of the the stranger because they will consider the researcher as a stranger so so for that the researcher will mingle with the group it will be like missing about many ethnic studies or studies in the criminological like in the criminal network among the gangsters and where there is a party participant observations will be widely used even the journalist we call that investigative journalist without identifying themselves as a journalist they will mingle with the group and they will understand the happening their social life so here we are saying about it how participant life participant observations become mandatory on this part so many settings are too okay so intricate to the understand with the okay bisemanal techniques so we can about that and think of the understanding the core setting so helps formulate survey questions that are sensible and appropriately phrased so that is become more important on this participation observations and further what we can mean by the participant observations involves a researcher getting to know the people they are studying by entering their world and and participating in their in that world so what we saying about that how uh, a researcher we can saying about the harald garfinkel when the harald garfinkel used to saying about ethno ethnometrology in a sociology research a founder of uh, ethnometrological perspectives in sociology Harald Goffingal is an American sociologist used to saying about it understanding the people method from the people perspectives understanding the method ethno methodology he calls it a common man method study of common man method ethno methodology ethno plus method plus logic he is saying about it and study of common man method that is what Harald Goffingal saying about it is a ethno methodology he sees perspectives as one of the uh, approach that we have it in sociology it means understanding the method what people common man they use it so like the participant observation is what 
participating in their world participating in the world is what participating with them actually their world their world is what their view how they see the world how they understand the happening how they give the meaning for the the happening how they have, they give the meaning for the social phenomena how they give the meaning for their practices rituals right so social actions so understanding that is more important is not a researcher keeping themselves apart from a, a subject of the study and concluding themselves that's what we can call as a subjectivity then observation maybe overt and we saying about covert or overt is a covert or overt so there is a two way there is a observation to be made that we call that covert action is a secret we call it as a secret overt one we call it as a open whether participant themselves they proclaim as they are studying them there is a overt one covert one is what secretly they will not say that they will not disclose themselves as they are studying they mingle with the group they will study that so that is a covert we used to call the covert and overt so this means and you put yourselves in the shoes of the people you are studying in an attempt to experience events in the way they experience them so that is become more important on this part how participant observation is to work on the field as a one of the participatory approach and another participant participant method we call that is an opposite of participatory approach non participatory observations there is another one so opposite way is there when we saying about participatory approach there is a non participatory approach observation also there it is a data collection method in which the observer enters a social setting to observe the events activities and interactions with the aim of gaining a direct understanding of a phenomenon in its natural context observer observes the group without actual participating in activities observer he will observe or he will not participate in the activities of the subjects or the activities of the responder so an observer is observer is unbiased and observe even minute things and members may hide their actual behavior that same is what members may hide their actual behavior so here non participant observer adopts a distinct okay distant and separate role than that of the participant observer right so they will be they will they'll maintain a distinct role and a separate role but they will not be like a participant observer they will be mingled with the group so there is there is a difference between the two domain participant observer non participant observer in the participatory research the participatory research is a an umbrella model an approach as far the research is concerned that where we can look at as a participant observations participant observations we call we have what's the strength and limitations what is strength of personal observations we are like a behavioral studies like that we seeing about sociology and anthropology where we study about we are our approach to be study with the human being a yeah, subject matter of the study is a human being so one so one who is a reactive in nature so for them the strength is what an aiming so within what the culture so study of cultural perspectives an approach of the culture of the individual we call it as an aiming so within a one culture approach in the another words so under words and you are living on the experience with them so avoids researcher bias so what send this word avoids researcher bias because researcher is not keeping himself away from the subject away from the respondent because he is mingling with the respondent see he is deeper to understand what is happening so there is no there is no space for creation of bias in the minds of the researcher remove from the howton effect i think we know that howton effect a yeah, howton effect is a very good very good example of the study for the person observation it has happened in the outskirt of chicago a uh, chicago in a howton the place howton so where there is a different type of experiment they had it bang wiring room experiment illumination of lights experiment they had it in there so it will be behavioral study it's very popularly used in management if you study in mba management there is a behavioral study among the workers in the howton place the bang wiring room it has been studied in the outskirt of chicago in us by the behavioral scientist by uh, elton mayo and other psychologists that become a famous theorem for the howton experiments effect in management so that actually that is a study behavioral study that away from the avoid research and bias so a holistic approach that also is important for the strength the research a limit what is the limitation of the observations is what difficult to record data it should be everywhere you can't go out with the tape recorder and the notebook and not notebook or pen or pen or pencil no because you yourself not disclosing that you are a researcher so whatever you are mingling with the group you are you have to learn and secretly you have to maintain a data note down your data all these things so difficult to record data is so only which is based on the memory capacity 
observation skill of a researcher time consuming immediately or within a day you can't go you can't participate within a group and you can't come out from the group so you take a time consuming you have to participate in the group you have to make the people to be accept yourself as a one of the one of the, okay one of the members within the group so it's a time consuming maintaining a rapport with the group so it's a time consuming so that is what you say time consuming is limitation risk of losing objectivity there is a risk of losing allergy okay losing objectivity also sometimes we used to go for more narration than precise result so precision is an objectivity narration is a subjectivity it's a philosophy so it's a class it's a, it's a it's a two dimensional it's a two views we, we used to call that subjectivity and objectivity right so so that's what is precision and the subjective nature philosophy so that is we become a two dimensional views on this part so overview of the participant observations so what is the, what is the understanding we have it on the participant approach participant research and participant observations on the part that we can call that participant observations is a qualitative method with the roots in the traditional ethnographic research we call ethnographic research ethno study of common man research we, we said already ethno is a common man so study of common man method right research usually is a multiple perspectives are present in the community a researcher tries to know these diverse perspectives and understand the interplay among them and qualitative researchers accomplish this through the observations along or by both observing and participating to varying degrees so that is a what we can try to think about for an example there are many uh, researcher we can we have seen about we have seen about many anthropologists finally they will move with the study of ethnic groups a sociologist and anthropologist they if they wanted to study on ethnic groups and community of their ritual they will try to maintain a two types of research methods one is a participant observation and another one a non participant observation when the participant observations how it makes that you see that there is a picture saying about a foreigner mingling with the ethnic groups as showing that themselves every ethnic group will know that they are the foreigner but they are accepting them as a group so means that so observer take part in the situations being studied while carrying out the research if they are worshiping they they, they whatever the rituals they do and they will participate with the ritual as equal to their member so that is what they completely take part in the situations of the subject they study and uh, so we see in the board did a non participant observations if you see the non participant observations they may be a, they will be take part take a part from the actual setting of what what is happening they will observe and they will understand so they will not mingle with the group so they will be away from the group they will observe and understand what is happening and how the social life among the group so is where the observer is not part of the situation being studied not usually in the natural settings the situations will be studied up for the researcher and we so the only a simple uh, okay uh, example that what you are telling about it person observations a uh, researcher being a part of the group mingle with the group non participant observation a researcher takes himself away from the group so group he distinguishes that group is separate and himself he is separation he looking at he take his position is away from the group he tries to observe but person observation he himself become a part of the group so where we are, the level is what you are telling about it the level of understanding and this and disclosing their reality their purpose being part of the group which makes a sense is that whether they are big participant observer and non participant observer in the person observations in objective so what is what's an objectivity of objectives what we can say about it gain holistic perspectives on socially to understand how things work and aiming understanding and how people view their world and switching so how researcher views their world and real views of the real views of how people behave in their settings and see guiding principles on organization settings subgroups or culture capture social meaning shared by the people and to understand how it feel to the member of a given group so all these things to be an objectives of your participant observations as far as part is concerned so even there are types of participant observation there is a types within the participant observation whether it's a complete participant what is a complete participant we call that researcher become a member of the group he become a member of the group is it should not reveal the true purpose of the group members so the researcher not reveal the true purpose to the group member because if you reveal the purpose uh, so being which you are becoming the member in the group they will not disclose their okay secret 
So that is what is very important at this point. So a kind of spying. That is a complete participant. It's a complete observer is what? Researcher not reveal the purpose and researcher do not take part in the activities. Just observe the um, okay actions and okay behavior of the human being and making themselves apart from this part. Right. So methods of person observation, what you can call it. There are methods within the person observations, person research. Creating di okay, uh, diagrams, chart and maps, numerical data, written, audio, photos and video recordings, interviews, conversations can be done individually in a pair or in a teams can occur in a structured or unstructured setting. All these things is needed for participant observations. So these are all so they are used, they used, they used to make several methods on this part, the field notes, they used to make it that, and the documentary evidences, like a visual a visual document, you can call that. Nowadays, those days they will use a recording, tap recorder, all the things. Nowadays we have a digital recording processes, devices, they'll use that recording their responses. Oral responses, all these things, all these being part on this side. So, participant versus non participant observation. There is another we are seeing about how we distinguish the participant versus non participant observations on this part. In participant observations, researcher participate the uh, participate the inter uh, interactions between uh, participants. So we can get okay, we can get an in depth picture of the behavior. Observer may bias okay participants' behavior. So all this part is there. But in non-participant observations, researcher does not participate the interaction between the participants. And we can get a more limited picture of the behavior. Observer cannot bias participants' behavior. So being with them, they have a bias. Being, okay, And keeping themselves away, they can't bias, have a bias on this participant behavior. So what we call it the types of participant and non-participant observations, in other way, we call that so covert observations, we already said covert and overt times. Covert observations and participant and observations carried out without the explicit awareness and agreement of the social groups being studied. And this entities the find okay, finding some self-explanatory role within the research setting in order to mask the researcher's true purpose. It may be used because research access to the social unit group would normally be denied. So they will not accept when your researcher explaining about it. No, no, I will be stay with them. I am going to study with all you people. Then suddenly all the groups they will not accept. Right? Particularly a peculiar group, ethnic groups, they will not accept. They are someone, a stranger, or a third person, or other. They, the stranger want to be study their culture and understand their okay, uh, the truth happenings of their social life. They will not accept it. So ensure that the researcher presents does not affect the behavior of the being okay observed so there they actually without accept okay accepting the behavior without affecting the affecting the behavior of the uh, researcher on this part of the subject they have studied that is more important so that we have seen so far what is a participant participated research participated research is a macro orientation and within the participated research we have seen as a one, one uh, one uh, powerful tool that and method that we call that uh, we used to call that as a participant observation. That there is an another model also that I, we have started. I, I suggested to be explained as a case study method. Case study. There is another important area in a way that we can okay explore. What is a case study? As widely used in sociology research. For example, we seeing about what is a case study. Generally, we talks about that. It investigates a contemporary phenomenon. So within its real life setting, real life context, especially when, so when the boundaries between the phenomenon and the context are not clearly evident. So if they are not so, when the boundaries and the phenomenon boundaries context is not clearly evident, a researcher will prefer to go for a case study method, completely exclusively understanding the a case. Right. So either we are telling about we can, if you think about even in uh, social sciences, one of the okay a uh, discipline social sciences we think about okay, we can call that even a social work discipline used to call about uh, individual case work, group work, right? Individual case work, group work, and community care work, right? So they they'll prepare into the different case studies, 
Right. So like case studies in sociology, we used to make it that as a how studying of a case. Case studies focus on understanding the dynamics present within a single setting, how it is being given. The reference textbooks also being there in the okay model slides. The usefulness of the case studies. What is the usefulness? The case study, usefulness of the case study we're seeing about it. It will be help us to be exploratory understanding of the cases and explanatory view, which is explain, describe, and describe in the way what is become a descriptive nature. Right. So it also provides descriptions and test theories. It, we can test the theory based on the case study understanding that what we have and generate theory. So all this component from the understanding of the cases, that is what we can have. And when one can choose the case study, how when we can go, when, when, whether, whether all the study, <coughs> it will be interested, all the study will be preferred to go for a case study method. No, case study will be preferred, which is based on the choices. So choice of history, case studies or experimental will depends on the access. So what case study that you are trying to study, going to study about it, case studies preferred in examining a contemporary event, right? Whether case study, can, can you have a case study of the historical past? How can you do the case study of historical past in a way? So contemporary events that you do a case study and experimentals are done when the investigator can manipulate behavior directly, precisely and systematically. <coughs> so that is more important on the part. So if you see, there is a critics also for a case study. So what is the critics of the case study that we are saying about it? Lack of objectivity of a case study research. Why we call it a lack of objectivity? We say that the individual being part of it, absorbing of the case is so closer. We they presume that there is a object. Okay, what we are saying about it? There is a subjectivity, uh, subjectivity which plays a role on that instead of the objective role. <coughs> so then confusing case study research with the case study teaching and provide a little bias for a scientific generalization and case studies take too long it will take consume time actually case study the generally telling about it uh, so knowing many things about the one is what so so important aspect several aspects about the one case certainly it's time consuming it will take more time celebrations on this part there are protocol in case study case study they call it as a case study protocol include the following types so overview of the case study they, they make a background information issues being investigated relevant readings and we call that case study questions and keep investigator on track distinguish among the levels of questions pathway swiddling about on evidence and the gain for the case studies so the field processes access to the site okay assistance schedule of data collection so all these things more important we can't do a case study without any preparatory ideas we need some more preparations any study any sociology study we need a preparation the same way case study also we need some preparations whom we are going to study where we are going to study whom who, who is your subject matter so how you are going to approach what is the tool that you are going to use what is your prepared idea what are the questions that you are going to ask how you are planning yourselves what is your expected questions? How that you are going to do that? What are the information that you are planning to be collected from the person? Are the case? So all these things become more important that we call it as a case study protocol in this view. Then analyzing within the field and the cross case data. Sometimes a case study will not be end up with the only one case, or a single case, or either an individual or institution. So we call that a case study of an individual, or a case study of an institution, or a case study of a unit. Sometimes there is a it cut across the boundary. We call that a cross case data. What they call that? Uh, they, they used to saying about that there is a enormous uh, quantities of the data being organized. So the cross case data forces researchers to go beyond the initial impressions. And for the cross, okay, cross case data analysis, what they call that, can look at within the group similarities and intergroup differences. So when when you see the uh, have a, a case study of your group. Then identifying that each group, they will be if we are individual, we study the a case study of your few members, then cross checking within the cases and differences, similarities. Then there is a further level of understanding that will help us to be have 
they recall that cross cut case studies on this part so like pair of cases sometimes when you go with that like uh, we are saying about a uh, study of poverty condition in india so when you are saying when you are going to study about the people those who are having a po below poverty line where we seeing about it if you are collecting a data okay a number of uh, respondent either a 50 or 100 a researcher a sociologist may go for take a few case study also for example i find that the few cases among the number am our total number of samples that we had either 100 or 50 we among the total number of samples we may take either 5 or 10 or a few as a case example a case study so having a them a in depth study of the people a case the unit if the unit of respondent the unit of research that you had it as a family maybe you study about the individual respondent along with the family setting what is the research, what is the reason for his poverty that we called as a case study that's what if you have a pair of case studies so pairs of the cases that you go for a comparison of the one case with another case why it is happening so the limit similarities and differences between the uk okay each groups and forces researchers to look for your okay subtle similarities and the differences on this part so a case study versus other approaches why the case study is being different on this part you see if if you see the historical approach no access or control rely on the document and artifact only you want to rely on the document is because it's a fast event you can't have a, a latest information on that so what was the what was went on it will be available in the record only you are relying on the record the experimental research done when the behavior can be manipulated a social experiment so that is only when the behavior is experimental research that also being there but survey that also is a large on the case of thin descriptions and empirical generalization but case study that you have a further understanding of that you can try to collect enormous information because the with the active cases and the unit in a which that you are taking your research in the contemporary context right so that's approach what you what you used to call that holistic view of the complex instance observations progressive focusing searching for the patterns and developing assertions so assertions developing assertions on the board we try to think about how the case study to be approached on this part we can try to look at in this view when to use a case study how many so whether can we use a case study in all the researchers a sociologist we have many specialization starting from we call that uh, health social medical sociology okay rural sociology urban sociology environmental sociology right now we have many specialization cultural sociology economic sociology we have many specialization in sociology so can so with the specialization we do we try to go for a many research our researcher indulge in the different type of researches right studies on the family studies on the institution studies on the individual group culture but everywhere can we go for a case study that is what a question comes at so when to use a case study so preferred strategy for how and why questions when a researcher tries to have a questions why it is happen how it is happen why it is happen so there are many social problems so researcher before proceeding with their research they have the questions in the mind how it is happen and why it is happen to ask get an answer for the question either how and why we are we wanted to have can use what questions and so but where so we are saying about it how and why and what so here we used to go hard with the case study method right so but and who and where the questions which comes that and how many or how much and extent then where we used to go hard with the quantitative method right how much number so right this will become a quantitative method that where we can't make the case study will not be precise and okay it will become more different nature so the question is favor for the survey strategies analyzing of the archive records they will become a different so use the when how use of case study so we which is study saying about it if you want to know why and how the programs works and so on, did not so right so in the way that you understand that the exploratory are explanatory purpose not a frequency or the extent purpose the word that you can use the case study right so we can't use the case study for the okay what you are saying about that um for the frequency or extent purpose is an exploratory or explanatory purpose so where we are saying about it we tries to explain explore the things and make the subject to be explain about the happening that where you can use about the case study we can understand this part so with the view that i i hope that all you have uh, some understanding on the part of the case study 
uh, there are some ca categories also case study also they have some dimensions and categories in which how they used to go hard with the view they call that uh, three case study categories they have a case studies also they are, they are differentiating with the three categories right? they call it as a descriptive model descriptive case study so it's described and interventions and the extent and the context in which it's occurred for example the occurrence of the happening when you go for a case study so the case study which is describing that so why the, why a particular phenomenon has occurred the occurrence of the happening right occurrence are happening so you try to go for interventions then another model what they call that explanatory a case study model which tries to go up with an explanatory method which explain causal links in interventions link programs implementations with the program effect so what program implemented what program effect so generally we call it as that uh, evaluation study explanatory studies we call that evaluation study or a feedback method so study we used to think about evaluatory method where we study saying about explanatory study we study we, we have a case study of the program so the implementations and the effect of the program so that is we used to think about that is one category explanatory then combined so combined we try to go with that it is a brings together and findings from the several case studies to answer an evaluation question sometimes it's overlap in a real life so what is a case study model that we follow even though they distinguish into the three different categories some sometimes it will when you go for actual sitting it may overlap with one another so it's uh, because an ultimate reason is that for a social research because we have a, our subject matter of the study is a human being they are reactive in nature right that is what we call that they are social animal they are reactive in nature and they are psychic in nature see we can't predict their reactions as for the context right so every moment they are reactive so their action will be different their meaning will be different the idea will be different so we will be so accordingly we can use the appropriate tools the types of categories of the social uh, case study method that what you follow also will go for a change on this part right so in the three types of descriptive case studies that is what they call that one is a illustrative so the case study will illustrate descriptive method it illustrate the concept add realism and in depth examples to other informations and about the program project and policy illustration explain right we used to think about it so it, it bring out with the illustrate what is been happening and the phenomena so that is a descriptive case study and it is describe what is happening and why to show what the okay what the situation is like and often used to help interpret the survey data so why why it is happened what is happened generally selected as a typical and representation or representative of an important variations and the number generally kept small so because whenever we think about case study case study we do not take a large number because case study is known for a very a peculiar sensitive technique the very small number of the either uh, unit a small number of unit will be taken will be good to be have a, a successful completion of a case study if we can't go for a, a 100 case studies 200 case study really it will be very difficult even for research uh, to be complete right so number to be small is very good on this part and another way is we call as exploratory in another type descriptive type we call as we used to call as exploratory research to explore at those situations where little is known about the interventions or its potential outcome so exploring that so how you what with little which is known on the spot by the interventions it has to be occur on the spot the third one critical instance what is a critical instance they used to call that to examine a single instance of a unique interest or serve as a critical test of a assertion about a program project problem or a strategy so any study that you can go with like any whether we can case study, we can go for a case study study of program a project a problem or a strategy but it tries to be go hard with the critical research view that we call as a, that is another uh, type on this part descriptive case study type on this model other two types of exploratory case study we can have explanatory case study we, the descriptive model we have seen a three then the exploratory model there is a two type they call it as a program implementations the case study investigates the operations often at the several sites and the often normality 
so and the normatively is it said to be uh, understand what is the general rules governed by on the case studies and programs as for the investigations of these issues the social happening is concerned the second one they used to call that is a program effects and so the case study examines casually and usually involves the multi site and the multi methods assessment so what is a multi method we use on this process because nowadays case study is used in all every disciplines for example even not only in social sciences like sociology and even other disciplines also the case study method even the management they use a case study to explore why the the issues is happen in the industry corporate culture unit so how the human behavior is happening in the setting real setting so everywhere they try to use the case study to make effective of the system right so the one so we are seeing one type of combined case study which is used to call that is a cumulative so it is bring together finding from the many case studies to answer and evaluation questions and whether descriptive normative or a cause or effect method so things in this is as on this part how the case study which works as for the part is concerned so case study is a very uh, peculiar side that will be bring out with which help us to have a, a realistic information about the case that is why you think about in depth study of your unit so that is what the case study is become uh, become so powerful and uh, so meaningful and so important for the subjects like a uh, sociology because our subject matter related with the um uh, so human being so human happenings human being human issues issues happens in the society that we study with social problems what are the issues which happen in the society we call it a social problem we try to go for a study and try to identify the solution causative factor for the issues and we the sociology we try to suggest the solutions suggestions to the appropriate planners so in such a level and the studying of uh, okay using a case study method will help us to understand in depth the meaning of the from the sample populations the sample cases so that will really support us to be go hard with them for example that is what already told you a hawthorn effort right a hawthorn study it's a study a study it was in the uh, us outskirts of chicago it was by the, the western electrical company in the year 1920 to 1930 so what they had uh, this type of behavioral study so case study person observations all they had and uh, they had a different experiment like a bank wiring room experiment right uh, so a relay relay room experiment, experiment illumination of lights so they understood that how human being how the workers they are working they try to understand the human behavior group formation among the employees all the all these things were studied that's what i already given this example how to effect And just for a okay example, the, because it's a behavioral study is concerned. Because wherever we study the behavior, a micro unit focused study, a participant observations, like a study of the case, a study of the case of the employees in the city. So, where that such a explanation should be used on this part, it will be coming under the experimental part. I think I, I have come to the end of this part of uh, my presentation. What I wanted to say.